Hello everyone and welcome back to One Soccer. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming, and we are back with another episode of our Canadians Abroad series. This week we are going to take a look at an injury update with Alfonso Davies and Tejon Buchanan, a match to forget for Jonathan David, and a big trade happening with Victoria Pickett. Plus a lot more in our Canadians Abroad. Hopefully you guys are all excited and if you are, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub, and let's get into the update now. Heading over to England, we are going to take a look at Junior Hoylet, who is back in action. Hoylet started and played all 90 minutes as a left wing back in a 3-5-2 system. Hoylet had 42 touches, 3 recoveries, he had 3 shots, created 1 chance, and he was fouled 4 times. He was very active down the left hand side as Reading went on to win the match 1-0 over Middlesbrough despite getting dominated in possession. Reading found a way to sneak out with the win and with it now they sit 3rd place in the table with a 3-0-2 record. This has been quite the start to the season so far for Reading as they're definitely overachieving right now and Junior Hoylet looks very comfortable playing down the left and right hand side. This new wing back role is definitely adding to his game. He looks very good and he's going to be a very important player leading up to this World Cup for Canada. Another Canadian who was in action in the championship was Theo Corbiano. Corbiano started and played 64 minutes as a center attacking mid in a 4-2-3-1 system. Theo had 22 touches, one successful dribble, one shot and he scored Blackpool's first goal of the game. He pressed very high up the pitch to win the ball back, go 1v1 versus the keeper and put it away with a cool finish. Blackpool went on to draw a very competitive match against Burnley 3-3 to move up to 11th place in the table with a 2-1-2 record. Corbiano is proving that he can perform at the championship level. He's fitting in very well right now at Blackpool, showing that he can play as a center attacking mid or on the wings, and if he can keep up this type of form, he will definitely catch John Herman's eye. Moving along to Spain now, we are going to take a look at Luca Coliosho, who started on the bench once again and was substituted into the match in the 77th minute to try to help Espanyol pull off a late comeback. Unfortunately, the damage was already done as Rayo Vallecano went on to win 2-0 over Espanyol, and after two matches so far, Espanyol sit 14th place in the table with an 0-1-1 record. Coliosho has featured in both matches so far this season for Espanyol, and he looks set to stay with the first team. It was Coliosho's goal at the beginning of the season to stay with the first team, and it looks like that goal is going to become a reality. He's already featured twice off the bench and he's looked very useful coming from there. Espanyol definitely want to keep him up right now and at the young age of 17 with Canada and the US targeting him, his future looks very bright. Byron had quite the performance over the weekend but unfortunately Alfonso Davies didn't play a part in it. To the surprise of most, Alfonso Davies wasn't in Bayern Munich's squad for Sunday's victory over Bolcom. The club revealed shortly before kickoff that Davies was going to miss out due to muscular problems. Julian Nagelsmann did elaborate on Davies' injury stating this. He felt his muscle on his left leg, it would have been too much of a risk to let him play, he wouldn't have been able to show his dynamism. Regardless, even without Davies, they went on to win 7-0 over Bochum to start off their season flying in first place with a 3-0-0 record. They have currently scored 15 goals so far and only conceded one. It was a worry at the beginning of the season that Bayern wasn't going to be able to replace Lewandowski's goals, but they did that with the Sadio Mane signing. He scored two goals in this match and he looks like a real fit to Nagelsmann's system. More of a focal point was Robert Lewandowski's style of play, but in this 4-2-2-2 system, Mane is fitting in very well, and Bayern look almost unstoppable so far three matches in. There was a massive game in Liga over the weekend that saw PSG take on Lille, but unfortunately it was one to forget for Lille and Jonathan David. David did start that match and played all 90 minutes as a striker in a 4-2-3-1 system. Mohamed Bayo was supposed to start this match, but he was dropped for disciplinary issues. He was out at a nightclub the night before, which led to Jonathan David starting up front as a striker. In the match, David created two chances, had three shots, 50 touches, four recoveries, and completed 30 of 34 passes in the match. Fonseca had them playing the style that he wants them to adapt this season. However, it was a little naive going toe-to-toe -to -toe with PSG because of their quality. The possession stats was 52-48 to for PSG. Shots were 16-16 with Lille having 10 on net and PSG having 9. The stats would have told you that this was a close match, but in reality, it was far from that. PSG stomped all over Lille 7-1. Neymar, Mbappe, and Messi had a very easy time running through Lille's midfield and back line. With the result, Lille dropped down to 12th place in the table with a 1-1-1 record. Fonseca insists that he won't change their style, which could actually be a good thing for David in the near future. There is no debating that this was an embarrassing result for Lille, however, there were some good things to take away from this match. Lille did create opportunities, they just didn't take them, and when PSG had the opportunity, they put him away simply because of that front three. But the stats of Jonathan David in this match showed that he did play a big part. He had a lot of the ball and he was able to influence a little bit of the game. If Lille can continue this attacking style, it will be very good for Jonathan David. They will not come up against teams like PSG throughout the league on campaign. The teams will be very similar and this style can be very effective. They had two good matches so far with this 
naive match in the setup. They just weren't able to do it. But Jonathan David looked good regardless. And going forward, this could still be a very good season for him. It wasn't a great weekend for Canadian strikers in Liga as Ike Ubo had a difficult match as well. Ugbo started and played 72 minutes as a striker in a 5-4-1 system. Ugbo was making his first start of the season for Troyes, but unfortunately wasn't able to make much of an impact up front. Ugbo only had 18 touches in the match with one shot and he created one chance. Troyes went on to lose 4-1 against Lyon and sit bottom of the table in 20th place with an 0-0-3 record. Troyes should be a little concerned so far as through preseason and the start of this season they have lost 5 matches in a row. If Twal want to stay up this season, they're going to need Ike Ubo to show his goal scoring ability and hopefully pick up the first win of their season next match against Angers. Twal are looking to sign Ronnie Lopez from Sevilla. Now he has always performed very well in Liga and this is definitely the type of player that Twal needs. Creative and can put in a cross, Ike Ubo will look forward to playing with him soon. Moving along now to League 2, we are going to take a look at D. Dean Abzi who's back in action over the weekend. Abzi started on the bench and was substituted into the match in the 63rd minute as a left mid in a 4-4-1-1 system. Abzi had 23 touches, one successful dribble, and he had one shot. Pau went on to lose the match 3-0 to start off their season with an 0-2-2 record. They currently sit 18th place in the table, and this was the first match that Abzi did not start. This is definitely not the ideal start for Pau starting off with zero wins in their first four matches, but Abzi is definitely playing a part in this side, will hopefully find a way to break back into the starting 11 and help search for that first win soon. Moving along to Belgium now, we are going to take a look at Club Bruges. It was reported in Belgium before kickoff that Tejan Buchanan will miss the match because Club Bruges do not want to take any risks and are planning for him to return in September. So over the weekend, Tejan did not feature, but Kyle Lahren once again started on the bench and was substituted into the match in the 76th minute to try to help his side see out the match. Lahren ended up getting a good opportunity, however, he still wasn't able to find the back of the net, having two shots which were both saved. Club Bruges ended up winning the match 2-1 and currently sit with a 3-1-1 record in third place in the table. It's a little concerning so far that Laren has only featured from the bench and isn't taking any of his opportunities he's getting to score. In the striker depth chart for Club Bruges, it looks like Kyle Laren is fourth in it, which is not ideal with the fast approaching World Cup. When Kyle Laren is feeling it, he can be a deadly striker. He needs to find a way to get his confidence back up right now in Belgium. Hopefully finding a goal soon can do that and maybe getting a start as well, because there's definitely a player in there and this is just the beginning for him with Club Bruges and hopefully we'll see a start very soon. Dropping down a league in Belgium, we are going to take a look at Liam Frazier, who's back in action over the weekend. Frazier started and played all 90 minutes as a CDM in a 4-2-3-1 system. Frazier looked solid once again in his match as Deans went on to win against Young Ghent 3-2 to start off their season in third place with a 1-1-0 record. Frazier has played almost every minute since joining Deans and will be looking to impress to try to lock down one of the final places for Canada's World Cup squad. Frazier has been Mr. Consistency so far for both club and country and could be a very valuable piece for Canada because you know exactly what you're going to get out of the player going forward. We are stopping in Greece for the first time this season to take a look at Derek Cornelius. Derek Cornelius started and played all 90 minutes as a center back in a 4-3-3 system. Cornelius had a strong match in his opening game of the season as Pantelikos lost against Pac 1-0 to start off their season in 10th place with an 0-0-1 record. This is Cornelius' second straight season in Europe, and there's a lot of rumors over the summer that he might get a transfer, but it's looking likely that he's going to stay put and try to impress to lock down one of Canada's final World Cup spots. If Cornelius can continue to be a lock right now for Panatolikos to start, there's a good chance he could overtake Scott Kennedy in the depth chart, because Kennedy is just simply not featuring so far this season. We are stopping now in Hungary to take a look at Richie Ennin, who is back in action. Richie Ennin started and played all 90 minutes as a striker in a 3-4-2-1 system. Enin had an incredible match playing a huge role in his club's first win of the 2022-2023 season. Enin scored his first goal for Honved, showing his great goal scoring instincts putting the ball away with a tidy finish. They currently sit 8th place in the table and if Richie Enin can keep up this type of form, the Canadian national team will have no choice but to keep an eye on him. This is exactly the type of match that Richie Enin needed. He scored his first goal, got an assist as well, and played a big part of getting his team off the bottom of the table. Stopping in Portugal, we are going to take a look at Steven Vitoria who is in action once again. Vitoria started and played all 90 minutes as a center back in a 4-3-3 system. Vitoria had 71 touches, 5 clearances, 2 recoveries, 2 interceptions, 2 block shots, and he completed 90% of his passes as Chavez went on to draw 1-1 in the match against Vizela to start off their season with a 1-1-1 record. Vitoria had 71 touches, 5 clearances, 2 recoveries, 2 interceptions, 2 block shots, and completed 90% of his passes as Chavez went on to draw the match 1-1 against Vizela to start off their season with a 1-1-1 record, currently sitting in 11th place. This has been such a positive start to the season for Vitoria and Chavez as they look like a club that can finish mid-table. After 3 matches, Vitoria has become the heart of that back four and has played a massive role in their strong defensive start. 
This is the type of form we want to see Steven Vittoria leading into the World Cup. He's going to be a vital player for Canada, playing that heart of that back three on the right-handed side for Canada. He looks very good right now, playing comfortable in a back four. And if you're a Canadian out there, you got to be happy with his progression. Moving along now, we are going to take a look at Stefan Ustakio, who started on the bench once again for Porto and was substituted into the match in the 72nd minute as a center mid in a 4-4-2 system. In the match, Steph had one shot, two recoveries, two clearances, and created one big opportunity as Porto picked up an impressive 3-0 win over Sporting to continue their perfect start to the season and start off with a 3-0-0 record, currently sitting first place in the table. Starting minutes may just be around the corner, but either way right now, Stefan Eustachio has been trusted as a player to come off the bench and do a job for the team. Although he will be a little disappointed to miss out starting this match to Bruno Costa, but more opportunities will come. Porto have the league season, two cup competitions, and the Champions League coming up. Opportunities for Steph to play will absolutely be there, and he will just have to take his opportunity if he wants any chance to become a starter. Making our way over to Scotland, we are going to take a look at Theo Bear, who started once again for St. Johnstone over the weekend, playing 62 minutes as a striker in a 3-4-2-1 system. In the match, Bear had zero shots, 16 touches, three clearances, and had a very quiet match up top. St. Johnstone lost the match 1-0 to Aberdeen to sit 10th place in the table with a 1-0-3 record. Bear hasn't scored yet this season after four matches, and he will have to figure out a way to find the back of the net soon. He has been given a good platform to shine by his manager this season, but if he isn't able to start capitalizing on these opportunities, he may be demoted to the bench soon. We are heading over to Switzerland to take a look at Liam Miller, who started once again and played all 90 minutes as a left attacking mid in a 4-2-3-1 system. Miller had a bit of a frustrating night as Basel could not find the breakthrough, losing the first leg of the Europa Conference League qualification final against Cesca Sofia 1-0. The second leg is on August 25th, and if Miller and Basel want to be playing in Europe this season, they will need to overcome a 1-0 deficit. It has been a bit of a tough start to the season so far for both Basel and Liam Miller. They're focusing on trying to qualify for Europe as well as competing in the league, and they're really struggling at both right now. Hopefully, once the qualification is over and they can slide into Europe, they can focus back on league play and Liam Miller and Basel can find their form once again. We are stopping in Turkey to take a look at Samuel Adekubi, who started once again over the weekend, playing all 90 minutes as a left back in a 4-3-3 system. Adekubi had 77 touches, created two chances, had four recoveries, completed 85% of his passes, had two interceptions, and had two successful long balls. Hattasport went on to lose the match in which they dominated 2-1 against Gazi and Tep. Hattasport were very unlucky not to walk away with all three points. They dominated possession, having 72% of it in 15 shots, but were just not able to get the job done. They now start off their season in 16th place with an 0-0-2 record. This is not the start of the season that Atakubi or Hattasport wanted. They are a quality side and they should not be battling relegation this season. Moving along now to the MLS, we are going to take a look at Maxime Crepo, who started once again in goal for LAFC, starting in a 4-3-3 system. He made three saves, had 24 touches, seven recoveries, and faced an XG of 2.3. Crepo was scored on twice in the match as LAFC lost for the first time in seven matches 2-1 against the San Jose Earthquakes. They still remain first place in the West with an 18-3-5 record. This was a surprising loss for LAFC, especially to lose against the San Jose Earthquakes like this. I think it was just a bit of a hiccup and they should be back to winning ways next weekend. Moving along now to another Canadian keeper in the MLS, we are going to take a look at Dane St. Clair who started once again over the weekend in goal for Minnesota United in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, St. Clair made one save, had 33 touches, 7 recoveries, and faced an XG of 1.2. He got scored on once as Minnesota went on to win the match 2-1 against the high-flying Austin FC. They now sit 4th place in the West with a 12-5-9 record. Minnesota are 7-2-1 in their last 10 matches and are currently one of the hottest teams in MLS. The team is performing well and Dane St. Clair has been incredible, maybe the keeper of the season, and they're definitely a team to watch out for in the upcoming playoffs. Jacob Schaffelberg made his debut for Nashville over the weekend as Schaffelberg started and played 45 minutes as a center mid in a 4-3-1-2 system. Schaffelberg had two shots, only 16 touches, but did score the first goal of the match since making his lone move to Nashville as Handy Mukhtar dribbled through a couple players and the ball fell kindly for Schaffelberg to run onto and smash home from inside the box. Nashville went on to pick up a very impressive 4-0 win over FC Dallas to sit 6th place in the table with a 9-9-9 record. Schaffelberg couldn't have asked for a better start to his Nashville career since making the move, and once he gets up to match fitness, he could become a regular in this side. There is no denying that Schaffelberg isn't a quality player, he just wasn't going to get those opportunities with TFC. He's getting them now and he's capitalizing them with Nashville. If he can keep up this form leading into the playoffs, maybe there's an outside chance he can make that World Cup squad. Taking a look at the LA Galaxy, we are going to focus on Raheem Edwards, who started once again over the weekend, playing all 90 minutes as a left back in a 4-4-2 system. 
Edwards completed 85% of his passes. He had 72 touches, two clearances, seven recoveries, and had three successful dribbles in the match that the Galaxy drew 3-3 against Seattle. They currently sit seventh place in the West with a 10-4 and 11 record. Edwards has started two matches in a row now for the Galaxy. He had a very solid performance once again, and it looks now that he's regained the starting left back role. Heading over to the NWSL, we are going to take a look at the Houston Dash, who lined up over the weekend in a 4-3-3 system. Three Canadians featured in that match as Alicia Chapman started at left back, Sophia Schmidt started at center mid, and Nichelle Prince started up front at left wing. Chapman and Schmidt played the entire match, and Prince was substituted off in the 90th minute. Unfortunately, the San Diego Wave put up a great effort and walked away with a 3-1 win as Alex Morgan was the star of the show. With the result, Houston sit third place in the table with an 8-4-5 record, still comfortably holding on to a playoff position. There is a big trade that went down in the NWSL that involved Victoria Pickett. The Kansas City Current have traded Victoria Pickett to Gotham FC in exchange for a first round draft pick. The pick will either be O.L. Reign's natural first round pick currently held by Gotham or Gotham's second highest selection in the 2023 NWSL draft and 200000 in allocation money in exchange for Pickett. Casey's general manager spoke very highly about Pickett and had this to say, Victoria has been an amazing player for Kansas City and we want to thank her for all she has done for this club and community. Victoria has an incredibly bright future and we will always view her as a part of the foundation which has become the current. Pickett was the second pick for Kansas City in the 15th selection overall in the 2021 NWSL draft. The Canadian international made an immediate impact for Kansas City assisting on the club's first goal in the 2021 Challenger Cup. She also scored the winning goal in the club's first franchise win over OL Reign on August 14th, 2021. She will leave Kansas City with a goal and assist in 30 starts and 35 total appearances. This looks like it could be an incredible move for Victoria Pickett, but she did feature in her final match for Casey over the weekend, getting substituted into the match in the 66th minute. Desiree Scott also started in that match, playing as a center mid in a 3-5-2 system. Scott played all 90 minutes once again as Casey went on to draw the match 1-1 against Angel City FC. The Courage remained 4th place in the table with a 7-5-4 record. It was an important point earned by KC and a great way to say goodbye to Victoria Pickett. That's all for this week's Canadians Abroad episode. I hope you guys did enjoy it. And if you did, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub as well. And be sure to subscribe over to One Soccer for all the best Canadian soccer coverage. My name is Josh Deming. Thank you all for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers, friends.